Welcome to the experimental design video. For some of you, this is a makeup video because we sort of missed experimental design in class and this will help you with your homework. But it's also a resource that you can come back to at any time you would like. So it's important not to get confused between the scientific method and experimental design. They are incredibly interrelated ideas, but slightly different. The scientific method refers to the entire process. This is asking questions, doing your research, formulating a hypothesis, and then goes into collecting data, analyzing data, and writing and drawing conclusions. Experimental design really focuses on how to test a hypothesis to ensure we get meaningful data. So the majority of your experimental design is really going to fall in this area right in here. So we're going to talk about the steps in designing an experiment, but we're going to do it within the context of talking about a very famous experiment in biology. And this is an experiment done by a man named Francisco Reddy. He was an Italian physician in the 17th century. He created a very elegant and simplistic way of disproving a commonly held belief at the time. So what most people believed in around the world, even the scientific community at that time, was in something called spontaneous generation. This is the idea that life comes from the non-living. Now we laugh at this now, but at the time they lacked a lot of the technology we have in order to make this idea easily disproven. Francisco Reddy did not believe in spontaneous generation, so he started with a little bit of a question. Where does life come from if it doesn't come from the non-living? So he specifically looked at the belief that maggots came from rotting meat. This belief came from the fact that a lot of meat was sold in open-air markets, so they would butcher an animal, they would hang it up, and then people wouldn't see the flies come and land on the meat, they would just see the maggots appear a couple days later. So since no one had seen the flies, they just assume the rotting meat was producing the maggots. Reddy obviously did not believe this and designed an experiment. So his hypothesis, which hypotheses should always be formulated as if-then statements. So his was, if maggots come from flies, then cheesecloth, which is sort of like a, a thin muslin cloth, will prevent maggots from appearing on rotting meat. So now we'll look at variables. There are two types of variables in an experiment. There's the independent variable. This is what you control. And then there's your dependent variable. This is what you measure. Independent is often called the manipulated variable, and dependent is often called your responding variable. For this class, we'll refer to them as independent and dependent. So if we look at Reddy's variables, his independent variable was covering the jars. Now he did this two different ways. To make sure that it was the flies and not something just traveling through the air, he sealed one jar completely. And then a second jar he put that cheesecloth, which has tiny holes which would let air in, but it wouldn't let a whole fly in. So the covering of the jars was his independent variable. He controlled it. His dependent variable was the presence of the maggots. If his hypothesis was true, then he shouldn't see maggots in his two covered jars. Whereas if it's not, then he will see them. So in any experiment, you have two groups. The experimental group is the group that gets treated with the independent variable. Remember, Reddy's independent variable was covering the jars. And then the control group is the group that does not get treated with the independent variable. So in his case, he just left the jar open and let flies go in and out. Next we get to controls. You only want to study the effect of the independent variable. A good experiment only tests one variable at a time and tries to keep everything else the same. Now try is the key word here because it is impossible to keep everything the same. So these are your experimental controls, the things you keep the same. So some examples of some controls that Reddy would have had might have been the amount of time he left it out in the sun, the temperature he kept the jars at, and how long he let the experiment go on for. Now, the last thing we need to know about designing experiments is drawing conclusions. There are two possible outcomes for any experiment. The first is that you reject the hypothesis. This means that your outcome was not what you would have predicted by your hypothesis. And the second is that you would support the hypothesis, which means the outcome was what you predicted. In Reddy's case, he was able to support his hypothesis. That means that his two sealed jars, when he checked on them later, had no maggots in them, just the ones that he had left open which supported his idea that maggots did not come from spontaneous generation or from the meat. They came from the flies. Now, there's a 
sort of idea that some students have that rejecting a hypothesis means that you did the experiment wrong or there's something bad. Science learns more by failure more often than it does by success. So rejecting hypothesis and knowing what doesn't work is a really powerful thing to know as well.